Of course. See, as soon as I start recording, I burp. I really also, I need to get a splash logo or something for watching the decline. So we need to have a little bit of fun because it's been a, little, been a little too serious lately, both on the podcast and just in the world in general. As, as I go through these dark places, we'll talk about some dark places. I might even record that episode today. Who was it? I think it was Edward sent me a link to a video about drama in the manosphere and I'm watching it and I'm just dying. And so I think I'm going to do a watching the decline on that also because it's pretty funny. But today we're going to step back and we're going to have some fun. We're going to make some, we're going to do some more low hanging fruit. What's more pathetic? What's, well, what's more pathetic than a woman? Well, what's more pathetic than an atheist? Because you say, great one, aren't you an atheist? Yes, but I'm not retarded. Remember, as we will discuss today, most atheists are not atheists because they've sat down and thought about this and rationalized out logically and reasonably that the all of the religions are probably not true. Right? That's not why they're an atheist. They're an atheist because they're social justice warriors and they think that calling yourself an atheist makes you some kind of an edgelord. What's more pathetic than a woman? And what's more pathetic than an atheist? A woman atheist. That's about as fucking weak as you can get. So we have here, now I tried to find this video over on his YouTube channel. This is at least a year old. I couldn't find it on the YouTube channel. That doesn't mean it's not there. Maybe YouTube's search algorithm just sucks. But this is our good friend, Jesse Lee Peterson. And he is interviewing this atheist chick whom you may have heard of. Welcome to The Fallen State. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. I absolutely appreciate it. Today, more young people in our country are becoming atheists. I want to know why. I, I can tell you why, Jesse. They're becoming atheists because they're idiots. Because they've gone to the public education system, which is run by women and boomers, and they're indoctrinated with bullshit. Now, once again, there, there is no invisible man who lives in the sky, but it's one thing, it's a two different things here. It's one thing to be like, well, you know, I don't think the religions are correct because they don't make a lot of sense. And it's another thing to be like, well, I don't think there's a God because I think faggots should have equal rights. And when you find an atheist, anytime, here's the thing, here's how you know that atheists are not people who have arrived at this conclusion through independent thinking. Because every atheist you locate, and yes, I know there's 17 exceptions on the planet Earth. I'm one of them. So are some of my listeners. Some of you listening. Okay, but you know this. If you talk to another atheist who isn't one of us, who isn't intelligent, they all have exactly the same worldview. They all capitalize the word black. They all think that homosexuality is wonderful. They're all pro-abortion. right? They all think that white people are racist. They all think there's no such thing as race. They all vote Democrat. They all favor socialism. They all hate capitalism. You know, here's an interesting thing. I just thought of this. I would be interested in seeing numbers on this. I wonder what percentage of atheists are vaxxed. I mean, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you go out and you find people who are atheists. I will guarantee you every fucking atheist you run across with only a very small number of exceptions is a fucking Wuhan hoaxer. I bet they believe in the pandemic. They're vaxxed. I can almost guarantee you every fucking atheist, 99 out of 100. Hold on, I'm looking for a piece of paper because I want to write this down because I want to see if I can find numbers on this. I don't know if this is a, see, this is the kind of stuff. This is all the stuff that we, we never hear about with shit like Wuhan, right? I want to know, well, look how many unvaxxed people are hospitalized. Okay. But I want the hospitalized people broken down by vax, unvax. And then I want them broken down by age and I want them broken down by weight. And then I want them broken down by pre-existing conditions. 
Then I want them broken down by, do they have a mental illness? Then I want them broken down by, are they on medication for a mental illness? And then I want them broken down by, are they on medication for some kind of so-called personality deficiencies? Then I want it broken down by, are they on medication for some kind of physical deficiencies? No, no, this is another statistic I want to see when you're fucking talking to people. Are you vaxxed or not vaxxed? I want to fucking know what percentage of vaxxed people are atheist and what percentage of atheists are faxed i will bet you i'm writing i will bet you literally hitler nine out of ten atheist minimum are fucking vaxed i bet the percentage of vaxed atheist is higher than the percentage of vaxed agnostics Christians, Muslims, Hindus, Jews, Buddhists. And they're, so they're not atheists because they're these rational human beings who have thought this stuff out. They're atheists because they're morons. No, I don't want to activate Windows. Will you fuck off, Bill Gates? For those of you who didn't know this, if you install Windows 7 and you don't activate it, it will work just fine. You'll just get that annoying message every now and then, but you don't have to actually purchase Windows 7. Now, I don't know if that holds true for other versions of Windows because I've never installed any of them because I'm not a homosexual. But if you install Windows 7, you don't have to pay for it. You just have to click away that annoying little screen every now and then while Bill Gates tries to shove his cock into your wallet. So, Jesse, that's why so many young people are becoming atheists, because they're retarded. And they're retarded because they've been educated, we putting air quotes around the word educated, by people who are retarded, specifically women and boomers within a state-controlled system that has been implemented and built and maintained and controlled by women and boomers. Now, one might think that, well, maybe the solution is to get rid of the women and the boomers. And if you're thinking that, you would be correct. That is the solution. But just like vaccination status, that's something we're not allowed to talk about, right? We're not allowed to point at all the things in our society that are fucked up and then notice how all of those things are controlled by either women, boomers, or women and boomers. I have with me Jacqueline Glenn. She is a major voice for atheism on YouTube. Her channel is extremely popular. Yeah, her channel is popular because people want to have sex with her. Now, let's bounce over here real quick because I went and looked up her YouTube channel to see where she's at today. Brace yourself. Brace yourself. Here we go. Okay. Purple hair, pink hair, whatever color that is. Now, you might go right over here and go, oh, look, uh, there, there, she's singing a song. So now she's a singer. Then you might see this one that says, I am no longer an atheist. Hold on. And then you'll see this one. Yes, I gained weight. Yes, of course you gained weight. You're a woman. Women gain weight. That's what they do. Uh, now, here it's about, look at my friends. Uh, men, women who climax are becoming men. Jesse Lee Peterson, that's interesting. Uh, can I have a baby and still be pro-choice? I didn't watch this video because I don't need to. Because she's going to assert that of course I can have a baby and still be pro-choice. Because women want everything, right? She wants to be pro-choice because all atheists are pro-abortion. Every fucking one of them. Once again, this is the this is where I agree. Yes, I'm pro fucking abortion too, because I want to get the garbage out of the fucking gene pool. As I have said countless times before on this podcast, if there is a woman who would murder her own child, I don't want that fucking DNA passed on. I want to get rid of that DNA. I also don't want single mothers. And, and then, so anyway, and I, you know, we scroll down and there's a bunch of, there's some kind of drama with somebody named on Incian or something. There, there's a bunch of drama videos like on Incian is emailing her 
and here's about trans non-binary people because again all atheists right once you become an atheist well now you have to well but trannies trannies are wonderful is it amazing how every atheist agrees on everything like you can find catholics that disagree about the interpretation of the bible but every atheist alive is in favor of killing babies every atheist alive fucking thinks homosexuality is wonderful every atheist alive thinks that trannies are being oppressed by evil cisgendered white men and trannyism should be celebrated and they have a fucking rainbow flag outside of their fucking house every goddamn atheist has exactly the same set of opinions that they have been handed in their social justice warrior classes then here's the video where they're pregnant all right that's great you're pregnant anyway i think there's some more uh christian you know again more oh my god the homosexuals why are you so worried about homosexuals why is this the center of your life uh here's the on insian more drama again say it's just her with pink hair talking about trump said churches are essential what the fuck I mean, this is, you know, this is her life. This is what she's, oh, look, black, oh, look, black lives matter. Wow. Imagine that. Oh, oh my God. Look, YouTube deleted my video. Oh, woe is me. So it, it's just your typical woman drama. There's nothing original here. Here's the fucking, uh, Insta thought account, the pink hair pictures of the baby the one you know there she is getting fat i mean it's you know what is she's just a whore that's the beta male boyfriend slash husband whatever it is he looks pretty homosexual to me i can almost guarantee he's a, had a cock in his mouth so the i'm no longer an atheist video so i go over here to watch this because i'm about to make a video making fun of her for being an atheist i got seven minutes and 12 seconds into it after skipping around I think she's not really not an atheist. This is her obligatory video for Christmas where she comes in and says, but see, I don't have to be a Christian to celebrate Christmas. Once again, how many times, how many times as I do my what's her face impersonation? What's that bitch's name? T Tony, Tony Robinson, Tony, you know who I'm talking about. The, you need to have a plan. You know, that girl, whatever her name is, it doesn't matter. Her 15 minutes are over with. Right. How many times have I talked about this on the video? All atheists want to celebrate Christmas because they want free stuff. They're all the same. They're all exactly the same. Wow, Christmas, I get presents. I don't believe in God. No, it's not a religious holiday. Well, no, it actually is. And they do the whole, the, see, it, it's, there's no point in even talking to them. You can make fun of them all day long, but there's no point in talking to them because then they will tell you about how, well, but Christmas was stolen from pagans. It's really a pagan holiday and the tree is a pagan sim. I'm like, yeah, oh God, shut up. How many fucking mental, emotional, acrobatic hoops are you going to jump through to justify your desire to get free shit? You just want presents because you're a woman. You want attention. That's it. That's all that's going on here. So she's still an atheist, but she spit out a kid. God, I feel sorry for the kid. And she has pink hair. All right, let's get back to it. Even Richard Dawkins is a fan. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. You don't look. Richard Dawkins is a fan because Richard Dawkins wanted to boink her. I mean, this woman has people. Why are we under any illusions that people are watching this YouTube channel of hers for the intellectual content? I mean, this is her only fans account. That's all this is. All right, come on. Can we fucking start? Jesus Christ. Like an atheist. How did that happen to you? Um, <laughs> how does one look like an atheist? Oh, kind of like <laughs> Satan. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, um, hang on, hang on, hang on. I got to deal with fucking goddamn technical fucking problems. Of course. God forbid. God fucking forbid that the cords not get tangled up. Can we just fucking untangle? That's the story of my life. Anger. Nothing but anger. Hey, great one. Why are you so angry? I don't know. I'm fucking just pissed off, guys. All right. God damn it. Yeah, fine. Fall on the fucking floor. 
All right, great. Now I'm going to knock that over. We are on a fucking roll. All right, take seven. Let's see. And let's see if the fucking... No, uh, atheist, <laughs> uh, I don't believe in Satan either. Oh, no, no. I mean, yeah, I, I get it, though. That's a that's a common yeah. thought. Problem. I mean, she does kind of look like a tranny. Also, that, now, once again, you're looking at her. This video is a little uh, sketchy because I've got it scaled all the way up. I wonder, I could actually, I mean, I suppose. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, wait, what's going on here? I suppose I could do it at native resolution. But I mean, I, I mean, look at that right there. That's... I mean, she looks like a man if she's not a trans. And what great one. They just did a video where they're pregnant with the they, they, she and the beta cuck that was dumb enough to date her are pregnant. Um, no, they could have adopted. This could be a tranny. I'm not 100% convinced this is actually a biological woman. I mean, look at that right there. Tell me that does not look like a man. Process. So define atheism for me. A okay. uh, person that does not believe in God. Do they believe in Satan? No. The devil. So they don't believe in heaven or hell? No. Oh, okay. And so were you always an atheist? No, actually I grew up uh, Catholic. Yeah, see, all right. So the, the daddy issues and the mommy issues. See, again, atheist, it's never, well, uh, yeah, I, I thought this through. It's always this reaction. Well, I grew up Catholic and oh, I was so oppressed. But, but basically it's, I grew up in an environment where I was not allowed to just run wild and do whatever I wanted to do all the time without any consequences. Okay. Atheism in most cases is not a philosophical belief. It's a mental illness. It's, it's a response to not getting everything you wanted when you were a child. I was raised Catholic from kindergarten through my senior year in high school. And then after that, I graduated and had personal issues, I guess you could say, with the Catholic Church. Personal issues. Once again, the Catholic Church disapproved of her running wild without any control over her behavior and murdering unborn children. Right? That's the problem. She didn't get to do everything she wanted without being judged. So I went more into being a Protestant and then as far as evangelical and then started questioning things and from there ended up slowly as an atheist. And so are you able to tell us what was wrong, what type of personal issues you had with the Catholic Church? Oh, their politics. Oh, their politics. See, they weren't SJW enough for me. Oh, their politics. I mean, just no hesitation at all. Oh, their politics. Um, uh, a lot of their cover-ups of misconduct within the church. Oh, you mean the homosexuals. You mean the homosexuals having sex with children. And I... I as an atheist, there, Jacqueline, Jason, whatever your name is, uh, you you worship homosexuals. You have gay flags. You think homosexuals are wonderful. You mean the homosexuals in the church who are fucking small children? That's your problem. Well, that's not a problem with the religion. That's not a problem with the Bible. That's not a problem with the teachings of the church. That's a problem with homosexuals. Now, you can argue that there's a problem also with the church covering up the actions of the homosexuals. That's absolutely true. Why is the church covering up for the homosexuals? Because they're pussies. If they actually believe their own shit, they would fucking excommunicate the homosexuals instead of protecting them. So yes, the church is hypocritical and fucked up, but see, you think the church is hypocritical and fucked up because they don't like faggots. The, no, the church is hypocritical and fucked up because they don't dislike faggots enough to purge the faggots from the church. You mean the homosexual men raping the boys? Uh, molestation, yes. See, I, I like how Jesse, Jesse calls it what it is. You mean the homosexual men raping the boys? Did you see her hesitation? Because she didn't like that. She Remember, the first rule of philosophy is call things what they are. And that's why, even though JLP, you know, he's a Christian and a pastor or something, I, that's why I like him, because he calls shit what it is. He just calls shit what it is. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. 
And so at 18, that turned you off because you found out that this was happening that, and the church was covering it up? That was a large part of it. Uh, another thing that really affected me personally was one of my best friends growing up was gay. Of course, because, yeah, but sure. I mean, yeah, okay. And he was in school with me and constantly felt this threat uh, of losing scholarships to college or even admission to college because our school you know, had it set up such that anyone who was gay could potentially be expelled, and obviously that's going to look bad on a, on a transcript to an Ivy League college, which is what he was trying to go for. So then why was he in your school? Once again, why, why is this faggot, why is this faggot in a school that doesn't approve of faggotry? Why doesn't he go to a faggot school? Um, and just to see the, the pressure that that put on him. Oh and my the God, there was pressure on him. Oh no, the pressure on him. The judgment that he faced and the, the fear he lived in every day. Oh, it just fear. really kind of got to me. So that was another thing that, that really kind of hurt. And I found that other denominations were more accepting. So that's well, kind of what got me to leave cut. the structure of a Catholic church. And also I was looking for some kind of feeling or connection no. to God. And I never really felt it, but I wanted to. Right, well, that's because you're a woman and you're incapable of having a connection to anything other than yourself. Because as a woman, your worldview is that you are the cosmos. And when your worldview is that you are everything, you can't really feel a connection to anything outside of yourself because you think you're the only thing that is. Right? Men can feel a connection to things outside of themselves. Right? That's why the religious people will say, if Jesse Lee Peterson will say this, right? That the hierarchy is God over man, man over woman, woman over child. And that's because men, let's, pre you know, let's pretend God is real for a minute. Okay, men are capable of feeling that connection to God. And men are the nexus of this. So God, not God, men feel the connection to God, right? Men connect to God and they serve God. So there's this active choice on the part of the man to acknowledge, to connect with, and to serve God. Then the man has to control the woman. See, the woman, it's not God and then woman because the woman cannot have any kind of direct connection to God because women can't have a direct connection to anything except for themselves because of their ego. And since God cannot manifest himself in the world, because he's, of course, not real, but from the perspective, if you're putting together this religion, right, you can teach men the religion, but you know good and goddamn well you can't teach the religion to women. You can't get women to feel a connection to the spiritual because they're incapable of it. So you get men to con to feel the connection to the spiritual, and then you get the men to control the women. So again, the men are the nexus. The men connect to God, and then the men turn around and they control their bitches. At least that's how it works if your religion is not cucked. Badly. Right, I understand that. Why do gay people feel fear when no one really cares about them being gay they should just be gay because because fear is their power jesse gay people are walking around all the time talking about how afraid they are of this and that and something else because that's where and how they get their power it's just like women, right? This is why women are constantly going on and on and on about all the men who want to show up and rape them. This is why homosexuals are constantly going on and on and on about all the people who want to stop them from getting married and not sell them wedding cakes, right? Because that's where they get their power from. If you take away their victim status, women and homosexuals are completely powerless, and not be concerned if someone find out or not. For him particularly, there would have been consequences. But he, he didn't have to feel fear because no one can tell unless he told them, right? Right. Right, but see, homosexuals can't shut up about being homosexual. Have, do, do you know anybody, like, is there anyone nowadays who's a homosexual and you don't know it? I mean, yeah, there was a time when homosexuals didn't have to constantly talk about being faggots. But now, in the year 2 RD, or year 3 RD, sorry, we're in year 3 RD now, 
in the year, third year of the retarded dystopia at 670 something to 15 days to flatten the curve, every homosexual out there has to make certain that you know at every goddamn moment, hey, I'm a homosexual. Hey, everybody, I'm a faggot. Hey, guys, hey, hey, you guys way over there. I like to suck other men's dicks. I really like sucking other men's dicks, right? You've got to fucking hear it all day long from every homosexual you encounter. But, you know, he had to change the way he behaved. He had to uh, try. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The poor faggot had to change the way he behaves. Guys, did you know that when I go out in public, I have to change the way I behave. Like if I'm in the fucking Safeway buying some groceries, I don't walk around talking really loud like this about how women and homosexuals should have the shit beat out of them. I change my behavior when I am out in public. Oh my God, I'm so oppressed. Look at me, I'm a victim. To act more masculine, he couldn't be himself. Oh, he was acting like a would normally be acting like a woman. Well, he was. He had more feminine characteristics. He had more feminine characteristics. <laughs> so he wanted to act like a woman and at school. No, 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 but no, no, he no, 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 no. Like he, did, he didn't want to act like a woman. Yes, he, he just did. wanted to to be attracted to men and not have to worry that. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta back up. I gotta back up. What did she say? To act like a woman and at school. No, 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 no. He, no, 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 no. Like he didn't he didn't want to act like a woman. He just wanted to, to be attracted to men and Wait, so he wanted to be attractive to men. Is he going to a school where homosexuality is frowned upon? Wouldn't you wanna maybe not be attractive to men at school where your homosexuality is frowned upon? Now, what about in his personal life? Okay, if you're in personal life and you want to go be attractive to men, that's fine. Why does the school care? I don't know. But but the point is, what's the point? Is there a point? That, see, he wants to be attractive to men. Well, go do that on your time, not at school. And not have to worry that he was going to lose his future for it. And also, it's hard to have something that, that is that critical to who you are. Be something that you have to hide every day. You know? Oh. That critic, being a homosexual is that critical to who you are. What if you're a white nationalist? You have to hide that. You know, you shouldn't feel like you can't tell your friends, you know, because even me, he wouldn't tell me, and I, I knew him since we were like eight. Well, that's Stressful. not abnormal not to tell your friends. Most people don't go around telling their friends, I'm a sinner. Okay, but that's... Uh... that true? <laughs> People don't go around telling their friends they're a sinner. <laughs> I love it. Oh, once again, tell me, tell me she doesn't look like a man. I still think the odds that this is a tranny are pretty fucking high. But uh, you know, I don't view it as a sin. Oh, you don't? No. Um, I don't really believe in, in that concept of sin anyway. Did you view but, it as a sin when you were a Catholic? Well, I mean, I understood what it meant, but now I kind of reject that. But at the time you did see it as a sin. No, and that's another thing. I kind of cherry picked what oh, I, I wanted. Oh! Oh! Who knew? Ladies and gentlemen, who knew women cherry pick what they want when it comes to religion, politics, yard. Oh, she kind of cherry picked. Oh, how shocked are you to hear that a woman cherry picks? Oh, and like that was one. <laughs> Jesse's like, oh, <laughs> oh we got to hear that again. We got to hear that all the way through. What? Well, I mean, I understood what it meant. But now I kind of reject that. But at the time you did see it as a sin. No, and that's another thing. I kind of cherry picked what oh, I wanted. I, oh. And like that was one. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's women. Women, even, even they, uh, they claim to be, when they claim to be religious, every fucking one of them still cherry picks what is a sin and what isn't. 
This goes back to what I said about why you can't debate with religious people on the whole. Right? You can't like debate a religion. You can debate an individual Catholic or Baptist or Muslim or whatever because you can talk to them and you can find out their specific cherry pickings, right? But everyone who claims to be religious, they every fucking one of them, women more so than men, but men still do it, they all fucking cherry pick this shit just based on what's convenient for them, right? So she's all, she likes homosexual, she thinks faggots are wonderful, her friend is a faggot, so therefore being a faggot is not a sin. It's not because she sat down and rationalized some process by which being a faggot was or was not a sin. She decided being a faggot is not a sin because her friend is a faggot. And you say, well, great one. How do you know that for a fact? I know that for a fact. It's a woman. She's not capable of rational thinking. You say, well, great one. How do you know she didn't rationalize it? Because she's a fucking woman. It's the same way I know that Jesse Lee Peterson hasn't given birth to any babies. Because he's a man. Jesus Christ, guys. This is fucking elementary shit here. The thing that I just, you know, I was like, you know what? God's cool. He wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't do that. He wouldn't judge somebody for that. Um, so I kind of See, God is cool. God wouldn't judge somebody for something that I approve of because I'm cool and because God is cool. See, this is the woman mentality. God is like me. God would not judge people for being faggots because I would not judge people for being faggots. And obviously, God is just like me because I am everything. I am the cosmos. I am the center of the existence. Kind of just mentally blocked that out, and then that's another. <laughs> it's one of the reasons why I ended up losing my faith because I had to come to terms with that. And right, so she blocked it out. Here she she lost her faith because on the one hand she has the beliefs of the faith, but then the other hand she has her own personal beliefs that conflict, and so she's got to do all these mental gymnastics. Once again, see this is the problem when you're doing all these mental gymnastics. Either the faith is true or it's not. But when you're sitting here doing all these mental gymnastics because you want to be part of the faith, but you don't want to believe the faith, I mean, you're the retard. As I've said before, look, the religion is not supposed to change to accommodate whatever is currently accepted or currently popular or currently cool, right? When people say, well, religion needs to get with the times. No, 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 no. That's like saying that physics needs to get with the times. It's like saying, well, you know, water has been running downhill for thousands of years, but water really needs to get with the times. And whenever a homosexual is in the vicinity, the water needs to run uphill instead of downhill. No, no, no. And on, on the one hand, it's like, okay, so she finally figured out there's a conflict. At least she left the fucking religion, which is what she should have done. But when you say, you go, well, the religion says faggotry is a sin, but I don't want to think faggotry is a sin. And so now I got to do all these fucking hoops and hurdles and fucking acrobats in my brain in order to justify how I can walk around and still keep claiming that I'm religious while at the same time not believing the things of my religion. So at least she did eventually reject the religion because she had rejected rejected the religion to begin with. When she did not accept the teachings of the religion, she was rejecting it right then. But again, because she's a woman, she wants to try to conform. She wants to have her cake and to eat it too, although I don't know why you would want cake and you're not going to eat it. So that's a very strange expression. We all know that. And yeah, that I just, I kind of ran out of steam. Let's go. The fact that I was cherry picking and I didn't want to admit it to myself, but when I finally did yeah. and actually looked at everything, I just couldn't. Right. I, I didn't want to admit to myself that I was cherry picking. Of course you don't. Be honest with myself and continue wow. down that path. And so you left that church and you went to a Protestant church, you say? I, I delved into different Protestant churches. My, my dad's side of the family is, is more Protestant leaning. So it was kind of an easy transition for me, which, you know, it, it was an insult to my very Roman Catholic. It was an easy transition because I didn't want to... I didn't want to put any effort into this, so I rejected Roman Catholicism, and I just went and became a Protestant because it was easy. See, it was easy. It was the path of least resistance. It's just, it's just so easy 
because she's a woman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maternal side of the family. Yes. Um, but it was something that I, I tried. And did you feel closer to God once you became a Protestant? Uh, I felt, I felt better with those environments than Catholic churches. Right. right, because Protestant, and I don't know this for a fact, again, because I'm not a religious expert. I'm guessing, but I guarantee you what I'm about to say is right. The reason she felt more comfortable in the Protestant environment is because the Protestant environment was, is, more accepting of sin. It's more accepting of homosexuals. It's more accepting of trannies. And that's why she felt better there. But uh, I still didn't feel like a thing. And so did you go to another religion or church after you left there? When I got engaged, um, my, <laughs> my fiance's family influenced fuck? me a lot and they were very evangelical. Wow. So for a while, a very brief while, I kind of adopted that mentality where I was just um, almost evangelizing to friends because I was afraid they were all going to go to hell. Uh, it was actually kind of bad. I was I, I said some hurtful things to people that I regret and have later apologized for. Um, but I as women are not capable of regret. She didn't say these apologies because she regretted it. She said these apologies because she wanted these people to not reject her because she wanted to be accepted by people so that when Christmas came around she could get presents. I briefly went into that, and then after that, I kind of did the agnostic thing for a while. When you say I wanted to feel close to God, what were you looking for? Um, I, I guess I just really wanted to believe it. I just wanted to feel like I wasn't tricking myself. Oh, I see. You know, which is kind of what I had been doing for a while. And it just, it seemed so. Well, now, in your defense, you're a woman. It's not that hard to trick you like such a nice idea. I get it. There is a, a comfort that comes from feeling like there's somebody watching you, taking care of you, looking after you, that there is some afterlife that you can look forward to and see your loved ones that you care about that have passed. That's very comforting. And that's and now I agree with that. That is a big appeal of religion. There is this comfort in knowing that there's someone who cares about you and looks after you. And that's called statism. And that's why all atheists, they, they, the atheists haven't given up this need to have somebody more powerful than them looking out for them and taking care of them and providing for them. They've just transferred it from God to Joseph Biden. I mean, it is. Once again, statism is just as much a religion as religion is, right? What she says is true. This is 100% true. Religious people believe in this God and this afterlife because it comforts them. Everything she just said in that statement is completely true. And every bit of it still applies to her because she just doesn't look to an invisible man in the sky to do those things. She looks to the government to do those things. And it's one thing to think that there's this God who's all powerful and all knowing can do all this stuff looking out for you. That is actually far more rational and believable than to look at the government and think that the government is going to look out for you and care about you, okay? Once again, this is where when atheists try to pretend that they're rational, like, no, you're not. You're, ca you're counting on the government to provide for you. How is that working out? How is that worked out for anybody? How did that work out for the American Indians who signed the treaties with the government? How did that work out for all the people in Hiroshima and Nagasaki that got nuked? How did that work out for the black men in the Tuskegee experiment? How did that work out for all the people that the government sterilized prior to World War II when we had a eugenics program, which I'm completely in favor of, don't get me wrong. How did that work out for all the people that are incarcerated for having marriage? marijuana and getting raped in prison, right? How did that work? How is the government looking out for you working out for your retirement package? How's that social security fund holding up? How is your diet going for those of you who eat the food recommended to you by the government? How's your fucking Wuhan vax going for you, right? The idea that the government is going to provide for you and look out for you. And a man who lives in the sky is more believable than the government. Okay, Atheists are not these rational, intelligent people who have logic their way through anything. These people are religious fucking fanatics who worship themselves and the government. That's the thing I didn't want to let go of. Did you know 
that there is no feeling to God. When you come to God, the, the thing that's missing in you is, is uh, the conflict that you have, the worry, the fears, the doubt, the insecurity, the feeling of uh, lack of love. All those things go away and there's no feeling. Okay, I think what I was searching people, for more well, most than, people are looking than, for a feeling. Yeah, a feeling, but, but uh, more of a, <laughs> a belief. I, I wanted to feel like it was real. Right. And that's something that I just never could bring myself to fully accept, even though for a long time I, I did it anyway, hoping that if I, if I go with it long enough, then eventually it will become me, but it just it so didn't. So you could never believe in God? Not fully. There was always something in me that felt like I was kind of just going through the motions. And that is, once again, that's yourself. The reason she could never fully believe in God is because she could never fully let go of her own ego. Now, once again, I, there, there is no God, but if you look at really religious, spiritual people, especially among Buddhists, but I would say that this is possible among any religion, Right. If you look at the truly devout and religious people, they have let go of their own ego. And that's how they ascend, whether they're right or wrong, whether the God exists or not exists, that's irrelevant to what I'm talking about. They've let go of their ego, and that's how they can ascend to this pinnacle of you know, whatever you want to call it, spirituality, holiness, whatever. Right? She can't do that. She can't let go of her ego. And once again, this is why the hierarchy is God over man, man over woman. Because you have to have the man between God and woman to translate and to enforce God to the woman. Because the woman, any woman, cannot let go of her own ego enough to acknowledge something greater than herself. But now you believe there is no God. I don't believe in God. And so why is it easier to not believe in Him than it is to believe in Him? It's a good I question. I feel like, for me, one of the major things that helped me with that was education. Like I, I, I Education. So in other words, indoctrination. Because I can guarantee you, she has not received any form of education. I graduated with a degree in biomedical sciences, and then I went to medical school for three years. She went to medical school for three years. How much student loan debt do you think this woman has? She got a biomedical degree, and then she went to medical school for three years. Why'd you drop out of medical school? What happened to that? Who paid for this? One of the biggest things that I learned from it was how to critically think and analyze data. No, no, you have not learned how to critically think, sweetheart. There is no critical thinking happening anywhere in your brain. See, once again, this is, this is the myth that atheists like to portray and project about themselves. This is the mental gymnastics that they're doing, right? Oh, I'm so good at critical thinking. And that's why you're a social justice warrior. And value evidence and... It's something that I, I feel like is necessary for me to accept anything. And, and at this point, I had already... Okay, so how, how about the evidence on the Wuhan vax? How about the evidence on the pandemic? How about the evidence on global warming? How about the evidence on 15 days to flatten the curve? How about the evidence on the children of single mothers grow up to be more fucked up than children who have fathers? How about any of the, How about all the evidence about race and IQ? How about the evidence that lesbian couples are the most violent and the most domestic violence occurs in among lesbian couples? How about, how about the data and the, the evidence on any of that stuff? I guarantee you she rejects every bit of that information. This is pure bullshit. This is why I fucking hate atheists. I fucking hate them because they are fucking retarded and they think that they're geniuses. They are so unfucking self-aware that they cannot recognize their own fucking retardation. He kind of said that I was agnostic because there were so many things that just didn't 
personally feel right for me with the specifics of religion. Didn't personally feel right for me. See, again, your reli my, my religion, religion's got to personally feel right to me. I need my own cherry-picked, individual, buffet version of religion where religion gives me everything I want in the moment and I don't have to have any control over what I do. I don't have to change any of my actions. I don't have to alter my worldview. I take my worldview and religion conforms to it because I am a white woman from North America and I cannot experience any discomfort. Belief aside, but then whenever I, I went to school for so long and had to rely on these processes of thought to help save lives, and I realized the importance of it, that is kind of- Help save lives. She's helped save lives, guys. What a fucking load of ego. One thing that just, it stuck with me. It's a, a way of training your brain to process information. Yeah. And if you don't have the information to process, what reason do you have to believe, believe in it? It's fair then to say that education helped to convince you to believe that, to not not to believe in God. Education altered my way of thinking in a more critical sense. No, it so didn't. So I used those skills and applied that in other areas of life, but it's not like any class told me not to believe in God. And so do you believe that you are a critical thinker now? Yes. You are? You do yeah, believe but that? I, I don't feel that that's a unique thing to non-religious people. Just so that you're, I mean, like a right. lot of people think like, oh, I, I talk about critical thinking all the time. That's not to say that religious people don't have that as well. Are you close to your earthly father? Yes. You are close, and, and were you close to him while growing up? I've always had a great relationship with my parents. Was he, and he believed in God? M both my parents are religious. And are they an example of people who believe in God? Are they a living example or just a wordy example? By your definition, you would say yes. They, they are really great people. My mom cares for both of her elderly parents. My but dad what? actually sings Christian music. Like they're, <laughs> they're amazing people. But what's the real deal? Because you're right, they can show me one thing but being their child, you're behind closed doors with them. You see. Well, I mean, no thing. one's perfect, and I don't expect perfection from anyone. Oh, a woman doesn't expect perfection. Oh, that's fucking hilarious. And you don't. No, of Why course not? not. Because that's uh, that's unreasonable. Why? Well, you that? know, because well, the thing is, is I put no one on a pedestal. Oh my God, she puts no one on a pedestal. What about Fauci? What about Biden? What about black people? Capital B Lives Matter. She doesn't put anyone on a pedestal. You know, uh, if, if someone makes a mistake, it's much easier for me to forgive them and look past it. But they don't have to put a pedestal to expect perfection from them. Well, you can hope for perfection, but to expect it is something totally different. Am I hearing you say that behind closed doors, your parents were not a living example of people who believed in God? I think they were better than most people who claim to believe in God. But were they a living example? I'm not sure what you're trying you? to say. Uh, I'm, I'm asking. They were great. I mean, my mom didn't have money growing up, and she still found a way to sacrifice enough to send me to a religious school, which right. was expensive and something that she really couldn't afford, but she did it anyways because she cared. You know. But were they uh, parents of patience and understanding when dealing with you and with each other? Uh, did they fight? I mean, Occasionally, but not really. I mean, I it didn't really see much of it. Were your mother, your father, the head of your, your mother? Um, I mean, I suppose in different aspects. Was he? And uh, depending on what area you're talking about. Were there areas where he was and other areas where he was not? My mom was more present because my dad is a musician and travels. Oh, okay. But, I mean, they're, they're both great people. I mean, I, I am very happy with the way they raised me. Were there things that you did me? not like about them growing up? Um, I mean, there, there are certain things, but like I said, I don't expect perfection from it. And the thing but is, you is did as a whenever, child. okay, now Jesse's going to go off on something here. And this is, this is, I think he's right about this. He's going to talk about how a child expects perfection from their parents. And I think he's right about this. Just, just listen. I'll try to, I'll try to shut up and let this go. You might not now yeah. because you're older, you understand. But as a child, you expected that, expected that from your parents, right? Well, kids don't, I mean, I didn't really, the thing is, is when I was young, I didn't realize when things were bad. It's only whenever you're older and you look back and you realize certain issues and can look at it with a mature perspective. So when your mother would get on your nerves as a kid, 
You didn't think that was bad? What do you mean? Would he would irritate you, cause oh, you to Oh, make me clean angry. my room? Would he would cause you to come, become angry? Did you think that was good or bad at the time? When I was a kid, I didn't want to clean my room. Did you think it was bad? No. I mean, I don't really see it as, as good or bad. It's just, you know, a kid doesn't want to clean their room or go to bed. I wanted more candy than I was given. <laughs> like, normal. So you, your father was a traveling guy because he was into music. Mm -hmm. uh, did that allow you to grow up close to him or there was a little separation there? It was a little bit of separation. But, right. I, but I feel like uh, whenever I got older, I, I feel like I'm very close with him now. And especially. what brought you closer to him now? It, there was a point when I was in high school where we had a very honest conversation with each other and he treated me like an adult. And that was a mistake. And opened up to me in ways that he hadn't before and it felt really great. And then from there on, we, we established a very solid relationship. Uh, do you believe that we are born in a fallen state? Uh, no. You don't believe that? No, I mean, I, I don't, like I said, I don't believe anyone's perfect. But to say that you're born into a fallen state is to say that there was a state at which you could have been that you fell from. And I don't, I don't really think that way. I feel like there is just the state you're born into. And are you happy with the state that you're in now? I'm happy. For the record, no, people are not born into a fallen state. See, the whole original sin, that's part of how the religion controls people. See, you're, you're, you're fallen just by the point of you were born. And so now that you're fallen, you gotta suck God's cock and lick Jesus's ass in order to get in their good graces. And the way you do that is by coming to the church and giving us 10% and obeying us, right? If I said before, if God can't create people that aren't fallen, then God's kind of fucking up. That's his design flaw. That's not my problem. Happy with, with the decisions and the way that I live my life, yeah. You have perfect peace? I feel very peaceful. How about perfect peace? I'm not sure what that means. You don't know what that is? I mean, I, there are things in this world that, that uh, make me very uneasy. So whenever I think about, you know, different issues around the world, it, it makes me, you know, not feel that peaceful. But within myself and, and the, SJW, the life that I live, right. I'm, I'm, like, I'm so I'm so into politics and BLM and trannies and stuff that, oh, I can't have a happy life because of that. You say, great one. Aren't you still run, sitting around whining about other people wasting your time? Oh, yeah, good point. Never mind. I'm happy with it. So when, during those times when you have conflict within, what causes you to have conflict? The most internal conflict I face is based on like personal relationships that I have, mm. mostly in dating. <laughs> Gee, wow, imagine that. She has problems with dating. It's difficult. Um, it's, it's difficult. I don't always get the Chad that I want. It's difficult. Some of the men actually expect me to not fuck other men while I'm dating them. I tend to focus on the good parts of people, maybe a little bit more than I should. Right, and that's how you suck up to trannies and faggots and, and you do the whole BLM and the SJW and single mothers are wonderful because you take there's these people who are very clearly very obviously bad people they are incompetent people they are evil people they are bad people they are bad agents and it's not because they're homosexuals it's because you know they want to force other people to bake a cake for them Things like this. This makes them bad people. But all you see is the quote-unquote good part of these people. Well, but that person's a homosexual. And homosexuals are just so wonderful. And, and I don't really know why. All I know is that, that the religious leaders tell me that homosexuality is a sin. And I reject religion. Therefore, it, homosexuality must be something worth celebrating. I can't really articulate why being a homosexual is so wonderful other than to say that they were born that way and everybody should have a choice unless you're a cisgendered white man who is a white nationalist and then, well, you're racist and you shouldn't be allowed to have a choice. Right. Which makes me more trusting than maybe I should be because I'm like, yeah, they have this track record or yeah, they've done these bad things, but they have these great qualities. 
and then I somehow think that the other stuff isn't going to affect me, and then it does. And I'm right, and this is because women are such great judges of character, right? As we've been through before. See, women have these amazing bullshit detectors, and you just can't fool women. See, women know when a person is a bad person. Like, when you're trying to date a woman, she's going to know if you're a bad person because of these amazing bullshit detectors that women have. You know, having to deal with those things in my life. Do you believe in absolutes? Moral absolutes? Period. It depends on where you're, what do you mean? More, do you believe in moral absolutes? Mm, like objective morality? Right. No. What? Okay, now here we're gonna start getting to the fun stuff. Do you believe in objective morality? No. You heard it yourself right there. Let's back up. Let's make sure everybody's clear on this. Where are we at? We're at 24 minutes, no, 14 minutes. I can't read. 14 minutes into this thing. You know, having to deal with those things in my life. Do you believe in absolutes? Moral absolutes? Period. It depends on where you're, what do you mean? More, do you believe in moral absolutes? Mm, like objective morality? Right. No. What? Objective morality, no. There, did you hear that? Objective, I'm writing it down. She said objective morality? Period, no. Period. That is a statement. Objective morality? No. So there is no objective morality. Okay? Are we all clear on this? Because we're coming up to possibly the number one thing that I hate and despise about every fucking retard who runs around LARPing as an atheist. Okay? Objective morality. No. All right. Let us continue. Why not? Uh, well, I mean, I think you can, I, I just, I feel like most people's moral compass is shaped by the society they live in, the people that they're surrounded with. Right, just like yours. You're at SJW. Your moral compass, which, because you don't have one, you're, what you're passing off as a moral compass is you conforming to the opinions of all the libtards and SJWs that surround you because you're virtue signaling, because you want to fit in with them so that they will give you Christmas presents. Uh, what is the norm? What's expected of them? And I feel like this can change drastically depending on where you grew up, um, what time period you live in. Uh, and I feel like to say that these types of choices aren't subjective is wrong. Because if there were some kind of objective morality, some okay. like clear yep. line between right and wrong that everyone just knew, then there wouldn't be so much debate even within Christianity, there are a lot of Christians that can't collectively agree on issues like gay rights, abortion, divorce. I feel like that kind of disproves it. Most people know right from wrong. See, I feel like that disproves it because there's people who disagree about it. No, people disagreeing about something doesn't disprove it. Now, those people may not be smart enough to figure it out, but there are certain things that are in fact true and you can reason them out. The reason people disagree about these things is because they, just like you, they want to cherry pick, right? The people who disagree about homosexuality are disagreeing about it because they want to cherry pick. That's the reason. The people who think that being a tranny is not a mental illness they believe that not because there's evidence that trannies aren't mentally ill because trannies are mentally ill, right? They believe trannies are not mentally ill because it makes them feel good to say trannies are not mentally ill because they want to fit in with other people around them who think that trannies are not mentally ill, okay? Uh, uh, abortion. It's, again, it's not a sin, but when you kill an unborn child, you are, as I've said before, the short version, you, you're killing something. It is biologically alive. That's an objective fact. And it is going to become a human if you allow it to develop. That is an objective fact, right? As I have said, no fetus has ever turned into a puppy or a bowling ball or a six pack of beer. Okay, every fetus, if allowed to develop normally, will turn into a human. 
This is an objective fact. So when you sit here and say abortion is not murder, we can haggle over the definition of murder, but ultimately you're just saying these things because it makes you feel good. And, and once again, allow me to repeat myself. I'm not anti-abortion. I want to get that fucking DNA out of the gene pool. It's just that when I say single mothers should be forced to get abortions, I'm not sitting here pretending that I'm not killing something that's going to turn into a human being. I just don't live in a fucking fantasy world where my feel-feels are the center of the cosmos. I am 100% aware that I am advocating the murder of something that's going to turn into a human. But I'm going to do it because that's what's going to be best for the human species to get that garbage DNA out of the gene pool. Uh, But in their fallen state, they have decided to accept wrong and not deal with what's right because it would require them admitting to themselves that they are wrong. And the ego doesn't want you to admit that you're wrong. The so they chosen to go that route yep. no, I of, disagree. of pretense. No, I disagree. So do you know right from wrong? I feel like I conduct myself in the most ethical way possible. And I weigh the pros and cons of every choice that I make. And I try <laughs> to choose the ones that benefit society as a whole and, and cause the least amount of suffering. Is that based on knowing right from wrong? <laughs> It's based on, no, No. it's it's based off of my ethics. It's based, right, it's not based on right or wrong, it's based on her personal ethics. It's based on her cherry picking. It's based on her feel-feels, right? See, her decisions are not based on right and wrong. No, no, they're based on my feel-feels. Do you know right from wrong? I don't believe that there is a standard definition of right from wrong. I understand what you're trying to say. Okay. She doesn't believe there's a standard definition of right from wrong. But I feel like, again, that implies a sense of objectivity that I don't think is right. I feel like it's a very subjective thing. My See, once right again, there's no objectivity. It's very subjective. There's no objectivity, right? It's an objective fact that there is no objectivity. From wrong is very different than the right from wrong of people in Iraq. Is it wrong to hate your fellow man? I don't feel that that is good for other people or yourself. Is it wrong? For me personally, yes. Is it wrong, period? (laughs) For me personally, right? She can't, she can't take herself out of this. She can't do it. Well, for, for me personally, no, 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 that's not what he's asking you. That's why I love Jesse Lee Peterson because when he interviews people, he's like, he's like a pit bull. It's like, I'm latching on. You're going to answer the fucking question. I don't believe that there is a period objective wrong for everyone as a whole. For okay, the- remember, there's not an objective wrong for everyone as a whole, right? Okay, just remember all this. The radical homosexuals who hate the Christians. Radical homosexuals. Are they wrong? Listen, radical homosexuals. Look how, oh my God, did he say radical homosexuals? Now remember, I guarantee you that she's used words like radical white nationalist and white supremacist and Nazi and all this other shit. But when Jesse talks about radical homosexuals, look at, listen to her voice and look at this expression. I've never heard that term. I've never heard that term. I've never heard the term radical homosexuals. Boy, you don't get out much. I have never. And you know what? I don't really know of homosexuals that hate Christians. And mostly it's just. (laughs) I wish you just said that with a straight face. The way around. Are you kidding? I, no. It's, you're, you're not being honest with me right now. No, have I've never met a gay those, person that hates Christians. Have you heard of those radical homosexuals who have gone out there to Christian bakers and they take them to court, they sue them? Have you heard of those things? I have. Is that right for them to do that? I to think the this Christians? is a this is a very um, this is a difficult topic. Why is, um, it, diff- why, why is it difficult? Wait, wait, this is a difficult topic. I thought you were a fucking intellectual with three years of medical school who could do all this reasoning and rationalizing and and deep thinking because you've been trained in critical thinking and you're so smart. Why is this a difficult topic? It's mighty easy for me. Yeah, I know. 
This is, and this is, proves my point that there's not an objective morality. Is it right? There's not an objective morality, guys. Remember that, no objective morality. For those homosexuals, radical homosexuals, to do that to the Christians. I feel like if someone is going to discriminate against someone because they are gay, then that person doing that, um, I believe in free speech, so that person is open to all of the ridicule that they get to Okay, so ridicule. So that person is open to ridicule because she believes in free speech. What if I want to speak out against radical homosexuals or trannies or pox? I, I, don't, I don't get this free speech, do I? Hold on a second. Hold on. I'm getting there. They, getting they should there. expect the ridicule that they're going to get and, in my opinion, deserve for discriminating against somebody like that. Do they deserve to be put out of business legally? Absolutely not. If they lose, but that's what's happening, and that's what he's asking you about. So these people deserve to be ridiculed for their beliefs, right? They deserve to be ridiculed for not wanting to do business with someone whose actions and beliefs conflict with theirs. So essentially, you want to utilize the power of ridicule and ostracism to force them to do what you want them to do. If they suffer business because people are turned off by this company based off of those choices, that's their problem. But legally, I don't feel like the government should shut down a business based off of that type of thing, no. And so you're saying then that when the radical homosexuals went after those I don't Christians, like that term. I, it, I don't like that. It doesn't matter what you like. Shut up. Right. Oh my God, I'm experiencing discomfort, Jesse. You can't say that we're radical homosexuals. Well, but it is. It's, it is the radical homosexuals who are going after the bakeries. Like the quote unquote normal homosexuals are not doing this. It is radical homosexuals who are doing this stuff. It's not all of them. I don't like that term radical. The thing is, is these people are people no. that have, have been putting up with a society of people discriminating against them because of who they are. You know, like white people, uh, putting up with a society discriminating against them because of who they are, right? Uh, you're going to get passed over for promotions and jobs because you're white. We have quotas. When you turn on the television, I was at the gym this morning and looking at the TV commercials. And once again, I mean, I know I've talked about this how many times it doesn't change, but I'm just sitting there, I'm looking at the TV and it's the commercials and it's black woman, black woman, black woman, black woman, black man, brown man, black woman, black woman, brown woman, black. Man. Oh, there's the token white guy. They are tired of it. And unfortunately, sometimes it manifests in this way. And I, I don't think it's fair that the government would step in to do something about this. But if these people are receiving a backlash, it is one that has been long overdue. If they are receiving a backlash, it's long overdue. Let us write that in stone and preserve that for when women are stripped naked, branded, and put in pens outdoors and sold like cattle. Because girls... If there's a backlash, it's long overdue, right? We could be allowed to simply have places where we could live where there's no pox, but no, the pox are forced upon us. And so when the race war happens, my friends, it's long overdue. The backlash is long overdue. You see, you can force people to put on masks and you can tell them you got to muzzle up to go outside and you can try to intimidate them into getting vaxxed and you can tell them, oh, you can't go in these buildings because you're not vaxxed. And one day, my friends, when the backlash comes, it's going to be long overdue. Basically, she's saying that revenge is okay. I'm not necessarily disagreeing, but I'm not an atheist who runs around acting like I'm a social justice warrior who cares about everybody and fairness and, and diversity and tolerance and all this other shit. I'm a white nationalist who would like to fucking be left alone. So is it wrong for the radical homosexuals to go after the Christians? Yes or no? To go after them in what sense? To force to, them the thing is, to bake a cake. I don't feel like. To, let me, let me no, no, no. I don't feel like they should be forced to, force to do anything. To force them to bake a cake. No, no, no. no not forced. Okay. Yes, for, they, yes, forced. 
What do you mean not forced? Yes, they're forced to bake the fucking cake. You receive ridicule as a result of not being open that. to this type of thing, then yes. So once the bakers said no, then the homosexuals took them to court to put them out of business. Was that wrong? Or is that wrong? The thing For is, the radicals to take the Christians to court. At that point, it's up to the court to decide. No, 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 no. Is it wrong for the radical homosexuals to take them to court once the Christians said no? No. If they want to take them to court, they are welcome to take them to court. Is it it's right free to do that? speech. It's free speech. It's free speech is not taking somebody to court. She clearly doesn't understand what free speech is, but that's a different topic. Hang on. What I don't think would be right would be for the court to then convict them and, and shut down their business. The Christians should take the, the radical homosexuals. You know, I think it's kind of amazing that you're focusing so much on the this type of thing, why don't you take a second and, and, and put into perspective the amount of hate and laws that have been passed to take away rights from people who are gay? Really? I mean, yes, because I see, I see homosexuals getting thrown off of rooftops all the time. What do you mean the laws to take rights away from faggots? What are you talking about? We live in a society where all the corporations are flying rainbow flags. We have an entire, are we up to a month now? I know it used to be a day, then it was a pride week. Do we have a pride month at this point? Where are we on that one? What in the fuck is she talking about? Homosexuals are suing businesses for not baking cakes for them and winning and having the business forced to bake a cake for them for their gay wedding. And this stupid broad thinks that homos are oppressed. What in the fuck is she talking about? Homosexuals are reading stories to your children. Homosexuals are walking around in the streets with their dicks hanging out. She thinks that they're oppressed. Like, where is this coming from? There, that is that is the bigger conversation here. What we're talking about here I'm not is the aware minority. Of any laws that really, because gay marriage, gay marriage was just passed. But they have never been able to get married, so that wasn't taken away from them. It is. No! That was great. <laughs> it wasn't taken away. They never had it. That's like me sitting here saying uh, having sex with the CSU's women's volleyball team was taken away from me. No, I've never had sex with the CSU women's volleyball team. It wasn't taken away from me. I've never had that. The right that was not given to them. So do you that feel said, like that women before before women had the right to vote, they shouldn't have fought for that? But let yes. me go back to the original question. So if the Christians took the radical homosexuals to court, would that be right for the Christians to do it? Yeah, you can take anybody to court. Would it be right? Want. No, you can't. You can't take anybody to court. You cannot take Pfizer to court over the Wuhan vax. Okay? If you have an adverse reaction to the Wuhan vax, you cannot take Pfizer to court. This woman has no fucking idea what she's talking about. You can do whatever you want. No, I you can do whatever you want. Really? Can I? Can I go form a community that only allows white people into it? No, of course not. Because the government that you support would show up and kill me. I, no, you cannot do whatever you want, sweetheart. I know we can do I don't believe in an objective morality that says something is right or wrong. It's, it's every... There's no objective morality, okay? No objective morality that says something is right or wrong individual experience as a human being if they feel slighted in some way and they feel that that is the best way to essentially stand up for themselves then do it you will learn in the end that you can't win legal battles like that do you discriminate I don't think so no you don't not. discriminate I, uh, I make a conscious effort to not discriminate. is it wrong to discriminate in my opinion yes and do you discriminate no you never discriminate I try my very best to not do you ever discriminate I feel like to say no, I don't know if there has ever been a time in my life where I've discriminated. When different guys approach you, there are some that you like and some that you don't. You know, we have our taste in, in people, right? Do you say, yes, I'll go with you to the guy that you're not attracted to? Well, actually, <laughs> I have before. And there we go. This goes back to the E. Jean letters. Why do women date? and get engaged to and marry men that they're not attracted to? Why do you do that? What What is going on in your fucking brain? And then you sit here and you complain about them. Well, I'm not attracted to him. Then why are you engaged to him? Oh, because you're a dumb bitch. Um, Have you ever but, turned down guys? Oh, of course. I'm always in a relationship, so but, that's easy. <laughs> I'm always in a relationship. 
Wow, boy, whoo! No ego on this one. She's always in a relationship, guy. I mean, check her out. She's a real looker. I mean, she, you know, sure, she looks a little bit like a man, but I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, at least she's not fat. Well, she wasn't fat now. Then, rather. She's fat now, but at least she wasn't fat. You're discriminating. Well, if I'm in a relationship, no. No, 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 that's, see, see, that's, that's, that is. Yes, you are. If Just because you're fucking one guy doesn't mean you can't fuck another guy, right? Men can't tell you what to do with your body. Yes, you're discriminating against Bob because you're currently being fucked by Charles. You are a strong, independent woman with three years of medical school. You can give that body to as many men as you want. So if you choose not to let Bob fuck you just because Charles is fucking you, you are are discriminating um, consciously twisting my words which is frustrating um, no he's just he's just accurately reporting on what you're saying which is frustrating because it's causing you discomfort and you're a white woman from North America and you can't experience any discomfort because this is a sin <laughs> no, I'm not no, no, you are you're I'm trying just to tell you the fact no, no I mean like <laughs> Go making Jesse. a decision, uh, personal preferences, tastes. I mean, if I choose that's tonight, a, if I if I choose tonight to eat pizza instead of spaghetti, I don't feel that I'm discriminating against spaghetti. Like that's kind of ridiculous to equate discrimination against a group of people based off of race, religion, or gender as the same thing as picking a flavor of soda. Do you agree with the feminist movement of today? Um, man, that's hard. Uh, I agree with the standard definition of feminism. Which is, I'm a woman and I should get everything. Hold on, hold on a second. I got to back up. Tonight, that's that's if, I, if I choose tonight to eat pizza instead of spaghetti, I don't feel that I'm discriminating against spaghetti. Like, that's kind of ridiculous to equate discrimination against a group of people based off of race, religion, or gender as the same thing as picking a flavor of soda. Do you agree with the feminist movement of today? Um, man, that's hard. Uh, I agree with the standard definition of feminism, that men and women should be equal. They're not equal. And so they shouldn't be because they're not, and it's impossible for them to be equal. Uh, but there are a lot of feminists today that I just cannot stand by because they, they almost thrive on their hatred towards the entire gender of men. Yes. And that is not something I feel comfortable aligning with. Can you give me an example of feminists who are doing that? Oh, yeah, yeah. There is this uh, idea of, of a rape culture that they keep I know. pushing. Oh, yeah, yeah, they do. The major issue I have with feminism is they take things that are, are real issues and exaggerate them to the point where it becomes almost like a boy who cried wolf scenario. Yeah. And then whenever there are real cases of these problems that need to be taken seriously, people don't. And I feel like they're doing more of a disservice to feminism as a whole than they are helping. And she's actually right about that. You know, once again, when, when, if you're right, you're right. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Because the great one takes every statement, right? You, you, you have to take everybody's statements within the overall context, but you can also isolate them. She's right about that. She got that part right. Um, who you voted for this time around for President Trump or Hillary? Voting for Hillary. For Hil oh, there you go. So that tells us how old this video is. She's voting for Hillary. Hillary why not Trump? <laughs> Trump is insane in what way uh insane. well he just recently accused hillary uh or he, uh, hillary and obama as being part of isis and he also suggests well i mean he's been called a nazi i mean the nazi party hasn't existed for how long what's the fucking difference suggested that people who uh, are second amendment people his words uh take care of hillary uh so hillary clinton has actually had other people killed but god forbid Trump should make a joke about offing Hillary. That she doesn't have her pick of the Supreme Court justices. And what do you think he meant? Uh, he was, I, this he is being debated, but it's, it was pretty clear to me and most people that he was suggesting in a joking way, but still it's not funny to suggest shooting someone. A actually it is. It is it is funny, depending on the context. It is. You just don't know that because you're a woman and you don't have a sense of humor. Women are not funny. He wasn't suggesting that at all. I'll agree to disagree. No and there are other things. Oh, but you he, realize he by to... voting for Hillary, you're discriminating against Trump, right? No, that is not. That yes, is not. Trump. You cannot apply yes. discrimination. You cannot equate discrimination against race, religion, people of, of different Who ethnicities. Made that decision? You can't equate discrimination against groups of people to making choices and preferences in political parties, in the food that you eat, and what I decided to wear this morning. When Hillary Clinton was same. running for president, and it was apparent that Barack Obama was going to win, and they were encouraging her to get out, the Democrats were. And she said, no, uh, this is not over until June. 
Bobby Kennedy was assassinated in June. Was she implying that Obama might be assass ridiculous. assassinated? Uh, Trump specifically. No, answer that about take Hillary. Care. No. Was Hillary of implying not. She that? She supported Obama. Of course not. She supported Obama. Was Hillary. <laughs> so why is it that Hillary can throw out the hint? Of assassination. She wasn't. Uh, she was talking about an election. Why I mentioned is, Barack Obama's name at the same time, and you don't see that as a suggestion because she that, wasn't. Barack, that she wanted Barack Obama. She wasn't. Are you an honest person? Yes. You would consider yourself honest. Yes. Are you being honest now? Yes. You are. Yes. Hillary is a liar. <laughs> Uh, well, is Trump is also a liar. I just prefer. I just prefer the liar. That she's a liar. I, I, I prefer the liar with the vagina. I think yes. I think that she is. She's a politician. Unfortunately. Why would you vote for a person where you know in advance mm -hmm. that they're a liar? Because Trump is a liar, and I'd rather have the liar that doesn't want to play with nukes. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah, because Hillary Clinton is such a fucking peace fanatic. And yeah, how many nuclear wars did Trump get us into? Oh, that's right, zero. Do you support abortion? I am pro-choice. You're pro-choice. Mm -hmm. And why is that? I believe in a woman's right to choose. To choose to kill a child inside the womb? I believe it's a fetus. And Do you believe in a woman's choice to be a white nationalist? Do you believe in a woman's choice to not bake a cake for a homosexual? Do you believe in a woman's choice to not get vaxxed? Do you believe in a woman's choice to not wear a muzzle? We know the answer to all of these questions. This is why I hate it when these fucking retards do this. I believe in a woman's choice routine. And I believe it's her choice. I wouldn't. I, I am not pro-choice, guys. I am pro-killing fetuses that are going to turn into humans when those fetuses have defective GNA, DNA. Let, let's be very clear. I am not pro-choice. Women should not have a choice about anything. I am pro killing broken fetuses. Let's call it what it is. Personally do it, but Why I am not going to take that away from other Why people. Why would you do it? Because uh, I, I want kids. <laughs> One last question. How did you come up with your YouTube channel? Um, I, well, I, I used it as an outlet for expressing my opinions because I didn't really have anyone around me that shared them. Well, I, I've watched several of your YouTube channels and they're very interesting. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I, and I encourage you to rethink voting for Hillary and stop <laughs> yeah. discriminating against Trump. Oh, yeah. I, I wish you would stop discriminating against Hillary. No, I don't like Hillary. Oh, She's, that, you're discriminating she against is the devil. I do discriminate. I, I see, discriminate I all do the discriminate. time. And, I, and we He's all honest. do, including you. Every human being on earth discriminates. Everyone. And they're lying if they tell you they don't. I think you, you need to take into consideration that people use discrimination as something more serious than just making a decision between options. Amazing. Discrimination is something that is like insulting. What someone thinks subjectively, their own opinion, their own discriminations that they may have, should not be something that is legally forced onto other people. We tell so that anytime, anytime that happens, I have a problem. There's an adult mother who wants to marry her adult. Okay, hang on. Well, well, well. hang on. Uh, is this where I come? Is this where I come in, or do I need to wait? All right, hang on. Let me back up a second. More serious than just making a decision between options. Amazing. Discrimination is something that is like insulting. What someone thinks subjectively, their own opinion, their own discriminations that they may have should not be something that is legally forced onto other people. We tell so that anytime, anytime that happens, I have a problem. There's an adult mother who wants to marry her adult son. They say they love one another, and the courts are trying to prevent them from marrying each other. Yeah, okay, I have a problem. Should they do that? I have a problem whenever incest and, oh, and pedophilia are... These is, people love each other? No, no. They're adults? Incest. Yes. Why shouldn't they? Love each other? Incest adults is not as... Like I mean, it's on the same level as two men and two women. No, it's actually not. Right. You can't have a genetically mutated child by having sex with the same gender. Well, you can't have a child. Okay, but here's the thing. Here's, see, this is what I wish Jesse would have said. Okay, what if the man and the woman both agree to be sterilized? What if the woman gets her tubes tied, gets her eggs removed, and the man gets a vasectomy? Then what? Because if that's your objection, which I'm not saying it's not legit, I don't want little inbred babies running around either. That's why I stay out of Arkansas, because they do a lot of that hillbilly inbreeding there. But what if, what if they agree to sterilization? 
And so you don't see them on the same level? Absolutely not. Of course not. All right. People having sex with family members, with minors, with animals is not on par with gay marriage. But at one time we saw how marriage. gross homosexuality was. No, we I never thought that opinion. actually, ever. Yeah. Did you have fun? Doing what? This. Oh. <laughs> yes, it was yeah. fun. I, I enjoy a good conversation. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah. I've had joys. Oh Jesse just jumps in and just, did you have fun? All right, hold on, let's back up here now. <clears throat> More serious than just making a decision between options. Amazing. Discrimination is something that is like insulting. What someone thinks subjectively, their own opinion, their own discriminations that they may have, should not be something that is legally forced onto other people. What someone thinks, their own subjective discriminations, should not be forced legally upon other people. Now see, he's not saying she's not talking about her. Like I, I feel her. She says, "What people think." Well, hold on, let's listen to it again. Let's 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 get this again. More serious than just making a decision between options. Amazing. Discrimination is something that is like insulting. What someone thinks. What someone thinks. Okay, so she's talking about everybody. She's not talking about I don't think religion is a sin. I mean, uh, abortion is a sin, right? She's not saying her she's saying what someone thinks so she's universalizing this okay she's making an objective universal statement let's go More back serious than just making a decision between options amazing discrimination is something that is like insulting what someone thinks subjectively their own opinion their own discriminations that they may have should not, should not. be something that is legally forced onto other people. It should not. What someone thinks, their own personal discriminations, should not be forced upon other people. That sounded to me like a statement of objective morality, which she claims doesn't exist. If there is no objective morality, by what standard can you say that I cannot take my subjective opinions and force them upon other people? Legally. I mean, how are you going to tell me that's immoral? Well, no, because there is no objective morality. Okay. If you're going to say there's no such thing as objective morality, you can't make these statements about what someone, what everyone, universalizing statements about what everyone should or should not do. That is an objective morality. And every atheist does this shit if you push them far enough. Every one of them will tell you there's no such thing as objective morality. But then if you go far enough, especially if you go into faggots or trannies or pox or whatever, they'll start telling you about how discrimination is wrong. Well, hold it, hold it. How is discrimination wrong? There is no objective morality. You can't tell me it's wrong for me to discriminate against people because of their faggotry or their trannyism or their poxness after you've told me there is no objective morality. It's all subjective according to you. This is every fucking retard atheist out there does this shtick about how there's no objective morality. There are, there are objective fucking truths and they can be discovered if you just do some fucking thinking and all these, and once again, it's just because atheists are just fucking retarded people with no self-control who don't want any control over their lives from anyone else, but they always want to control other people's lives. They always want to tell you, you can't discriminate after they've discriminated, right? They always want to tell you, you can't do this thing after they've done this thing. God damn it. I fucking hate atheists.